What's up, everybody? My name is Gary Lawrence, and today we're diving into episode two of the behind the scenes of my most recent documentary, Backyard Pilots. I've always loved the idea of watching my dad go from porch to plane in a matter of a couple minutes, and I knew that if I ever made a documentary about our backyard airstrip, this would be what the opening scene revolved around. I really wanted to show that this was normal for him. Some people go to their backyard to play football or play basketball or hang up by the pool, but my dad goes to fly his plane. This opening sequence was the only one that was really scripted. The rest of the time, I was more of a fly in the wall capturing what was happening around me. On the morning of our first shoot, I woke up early to capture an amazing sunrise. I went down to the bogs behind our house and shot a bunch of scenics, not really knowing how I would use them, but knowing I wanted to show the environment. The opening scene, which you can see in the teaser on my channel, is one of my favorite sequences from the movie. The use of sound here was extremely important because I knew I also didn't want any dialogue. I spent a long time recording birds, insects, walking sounds, and more to really draw the viewer in. But more on that in another episode. All of the scenic shots were captured with my Red One MX. If you're interested in what cameras I use, go check out episode one of the behind the scenes. I go over every camera I used in this film. Here's some of the footage from the morning shoot that didn't make the cut. After shooting the sunrise shots, I moved over to getting the porch to plane sequence that I had been thinking about for years. I really liked the idea of starting close up on my dad's coffee mug and pulling back to reveal the whole porch. I also knew that I wanted to have the entire shot as a oneer, meaning the whole shot would be one take. The problem that I knew I would run into with this approach would be that the sequence would be too long. After a couple of seconds of walking, the audience would get bored. They would get the point by then, and it really wouldn't be serving much else. To remedy the situation, I cut away to a black screen that introduced myself as the filmmaker, my dad, and Steve, who are the main characters in the story. This worked really well, I thought. I was able to keep the natural sound under of the footsteps, even when I cut to the opening credits. And in doing so, I was able to cut some of the fat out of the one shot. I'm really happy with how this came out in the edit. The camera that I used for the sequence was the DJI Zenmuse X5 gimbal. This camera has a very specific skill set. I picked this camera because one, it was on a gimbal. This means that the camera stays buttery smooth even when walking or running. The next reason I chose to use this camera was because it was cheap. I would have to spend a lot more money to rent a DSLR with a bigger gimbal to achieve the same image. Also at this point I should probably thank my dad and Steve who probably had no idea what the heck I was doing half the time and were wondering why they had to do things over and over and over again. I just hope now that they've seen the end product that they think it's worth it. So when you do it, Dad, you gotta, you gotta really stay. Like, cause, yeah, you're here. Yeah. And I can't see past, so you gotta go like that. Also, I wanna jump on the trend of how it started and how it ended. So this is Pixel when we started, and this is Pixel <laughs> when we ended. So as you can see, it took a long time to film this. Mostly it took a long time to edit it. Speaking of editing, here's my first editing setup in the apartment I was living in when I first started this movie. The intro sequence that you see is the first thing that I edited. Honestly, there wasn't much that changed. I did swap out a few different shots here and there, and I brought both Steve and Dad in to see it. Uh, it is what it is. It, yeah. is what you, it is what this place is oh, like. Cool. The last shot I needed was the time-lapse nighttime shot. To give you an idea where everything was situated, I'm gonna 
go back to this overhead look that I used in episode number one. So the plane was situated here. The light that automatically turns on was situated here. And what was happening was this light was overexposing my image. So what I ended up doing was going to the circuit breaker and turning that off and then augmenting some light by using my own light. And I placed that here and I dimmed it down as far as it would go. I ended up taping some diffusion paper to the front of it, which basically makes the light a little bit softer, a little bit smoother. And I dimmed it all the way down, set it as far back as it would go. I ended up putting a DSLR on the Red Rock Micro one man crew. So what this is, is it's a motorized slider. And what that means is you can program it so that it starts on one side of the slider and moves to the other side of the slider in a set amount of time. And that time you can predetermine. And so what I ended up doing was basically doing some math and determining how long I wanted the slider to move from right to left. And what I came up with was two hours. So this shot is actually a two hour long shot. Each image I took had a shutter speed of 13 seconds, which means that the sensor was receiving light for 13 seconds. Also, if you look on the inside of the plane, you'll see a little bit of a light there. What I did for this light was I actually grabbed one of the solar lights out of my parents yard and I put it in the plane and threw some like cloth over it to kind of dim it down a little bit. And that's what lit up the inside of the plane. All right, so that's it for episode two of the behind the scenes of Backyard Pilots. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. Also, if you're into this content, consider subscribing. I will have more content like this that's coming out over the next couple weeks, including next week's episode, which is the behind the scenes footage from our trip to Steve's camp in Maine. So we'll see you then. Peace.